gon' give it to ya what? Wait for you to get it on your own X go deliver to ya Greetings MLP fandom I've been waiting to do some MLP related content for a while now But I've been trying to pick what to do first Do I start with a review of an episode? Do a fanfic? Or maybe just talk about some of the reviewers I like in the fandom There's a lot of options before me But I think I'm gonna go with something I love talking about Powers MLP, like most fantasy universes, relies on the mythical energy known as magic. I'll get into the dirty details of magic of how magic works someday, but for today I'm going to put my thoughts on how strong Celestia actually is and how strong is the actual unicorn, uh, unicorn is. I'll be judging her, her level of power based on the feats I've seen in the show. It's hard to judge a character's power by real-world physics when their universe sometimes will run on, on our form of logic. But at the same time, if you take the feats that the character has done and then add the physics that it would take to do in our world, you can come up with a decent level of power for them. I'll be using the tier system for this as well. The tier system is used on a site called versusbattlewikipedia.com. I will put a link in the description if anyone wants to check them out. They have a good measurement measuring system for for character levels of power, but I do have to question their their character pages, especially the one on Celestia. The system rank supernatural beings from 11 to 0, 11 being the weakest beings and 0 being basically God. <laughs> so where does Celestia fall into this rank? Well, given the feats I've seen, I have to put put her at 4C, which is star level, or someone who is who can create a star or destroy a star. Now, most of you may be may not believe she's that powerful, especially given the defeats in her past, but let's go into the actual facts here. She's capable of raising the sun. It is pro proven that the sun does not naturally revolve around the planet. Even before Celestia, the unicorns had to raise the sun themselves. This means someone has to move the sun closer to the planet or, the, or move the planet closer to the sun each day. Before we go any further, let's think about just that feat. The force required to move an object out of the sun's orbit by 1% is about 1,000 times less than the total mass of the object. This means just to move the Earth from the Sun's orbit, it's, it takes about 6.6 .6 quintillion tons, and that's just the Earth. You have to fit up. You can fit about 109 Earths side by side inside our Sun. It has been proven that the Sun moves around their planet. The Sun moving around their planet is about the same size as ours. That means she is moving an ob objects 109 times more massive than the Earth. Now, some may suggest she's not actually moving the sun, that she could be teleporting it, but the theory, but this theory is disproven in the episode Twilight, Twilight's Kingdom, where Twilight is, has the task of raising the sun. In the episode, we see her physically moving this, both the sun and the moon with her horn. This, uh, this is another point I wanted to bring up. Some people believe Celestia can only do this to the sun and has no real effect on, in combat. The problem with that being is quite simple. When she imprisoned Luna for a thousand years, she was the one raising both the sun and the moon. This means her power is not just tied to the sun, she can move any object with her magic. Let's move on to speed. It's shown that ponies with high magical power can teleport. Now, we can, we've can we never seen Celestia teleport anywhere, but Twilight can. This leads me to believe that Celestia is capable of doing it as well. This also leads me to, into a range of her magic. She's capable of moving the sun and the moon closer to her planet. The sun itself is roughly about nine, 92 miles away from the Earth. This is judging by our planet, not theirs. Again, there might be different. There might be differences between our planets, but at the same time, if we're going by our logic, this is what it has to be. the The last piece of this is usually the character's durability, but I'm not sure how I can judge her durability quite right. The reason being is that it's all over the place. One minute she's able to handle a fight with Sombra, which is basically being able to come to smoke and almost roll over all of the um, all of Cadence's kingdom in a single stroke. Now, granted, uh, and then the next minute, she's being flattened by Queen Holes and Legs. Now, granted, that defeat is a bit more reasonable. The Queen was sitting off, off the magic of both Shining Armor and Princess Cadence, both having a, shown a great deal of, of magical power. They're both able to create barriers that would keep out strong beings. Hell, Cadence was able to create a barrier that kept out King Sombra for a quite a long time. Even if she was exhausted, we don't know how long... She, yeah, she kept up the barrier for a great deal of time. Uh, this leads me. This leads me to believe that it's hard to judge what her skills are, what her durability is. Uh, this. This means not only the queen was 
was having her. Uh, not only did the queen have her magic to use against Celestia, but the magic magical power of another unicorn, and a powerful unicorn. Celestia's very power being granted, we don't really know how much how much her magic is required to move the sun every day. So that could also be a factor of why she lost the queen, meaning she could be using a lot of magic to move the sun, and that's why she's more in a weakened state every day. But I'm not necessarily sure I believe that fact either. When we see her raise the sun, especially several times, it doesn't seem to affect her physical ability unless she's really good at hiding it. While magic... So, where does that leave the average unicorn? Well, magic is much like martial arts in this world. The more you know about it, the more you're able to do. A powerful unicorn is capable of holding their own against a young alicorn. This is proven when, when Twilight fights starlight glimmer some could argue she was holding back but personally if she's holding back in my opinion given the stakes stakes of what was going on i'd have to put po i'd have to take points away from twilight and i personally don't think she'd hold back given the direness of the situation so the level of power of unicorn just really depends on on their knowledge and time spent practicing the art the unicorns in the show all, all vary depending on who who they are the younger ones can barely pick up small objects while some can easily lift up steel beams from the ground. Well, this wraps up my thoughts about this topic. I'll be creating more MLP content like this in the future. I love MLP and the, verse, and the world around the main six is filled with all kinds of wonderful things I can discuss, especially power-wise. I love powers. They're so wonderful. Uh, well, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.